Welcome, everyone, to a actual play podcast by Goblin House Studios. We have an actual play podcast for you. We hope to entertain you as we struggle and underdog our way through this game. I'm Adam. I'm the GM. GM stands for Game Master. I've been a Game Master for many years now in a number of different games and editions, but this is my first time doing so for a podcast. I am a total amateur at this medium, but I'm going to do my best. As the Game Master, it's my responsibility to create a world for our cast of characters to inhabit and create a few challenges for our intrepid adventurers to overcome. Um, that being said, we all have varying levels of experience, um, but this is, this is the first time for this for all of us. So, any listeners out there who are interested in role-playing, you know, maybe you don't know where to start, or you don't have the confidence, if something's holding you back, maybe as you listen to us work through it and learn, um, you might as well. And uh, that being said, I'd like to introduce our cast. Hello, my name is Bianca. Um, I am very new to the D&D when it comes to role-playing and all that. I'm mostly here for the experience and fun. I don't know. Nope, I hate it. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's just... Okay, that's okay. That's okay. Um, hi, my name is Bianca. Um, I am new to the D&D playing um, completely, starting from scratch. Um, my character's name is Leilothia. Um, I am a South Moon Elf. And being a South Moon Elf, I've heard many stories about my ancestors migrating and following in the Wise One's footsteps, living close by the seeds of the first tree. But my ancestors made many sacrifices for us to have the freedom to travel and experience all the wonders of nature, as told by my ancestors. Uh, we have elves all over now. Um, however, I have the lovely option of traveling wherever my heart chooses, mostly searching for the footprints of the goddess Nushkali that wanders my home, my homeland. Uh, in her footsteps grows an amazing herb called sky thistle, which I smoke a lot of. I seek the most exclusive sky thistle that I have been told that exists. My name is Jojo, and I've been playing for three years on and off, and I play Nink Shadowcloak. And she is a druid rock gnome that chose to be a hermit because of circumstances in her clan that she no longer agreed with. She finds comfort in her solitude, all while finding rocks, mushrooms, and other little pretty things to make her happy. She also has a special deck that was entrusted in her care that will come and aid her when things turn awry. Um, people become confused when they look at her because she looks like a mushroom with a red hat with white specks on it. Um, she has gray hair. Her skin is the color of a halulite and she has pink quartz eyes. She also furthers the confusion by having a sloth that she wears around her face and it looks like a beard. So she is often referred to as either man or boy. To Ninx, the most important thing is her faith in Earth Mother and all of Earth Mother's creations. Uh, Earth Mother is Achaia itself and everything within it. Ninx refers to her as Mother because Earth Mother gave Ninx basically a second chance at life. Um, the most important thing about Earth Mother is she's unlike most of the other gods within Achaia because she sees not only beauty in life, but also values that of death. The thing that Earth Mother values most is the balance that she brings within Achaia through life and death. And the uh, thing that interferes most is the uh, court of the fairy or the fays um, because of their corrupt ways that they try to Turn everything in their favor. Hi, my name is Spook Jim. I've had a couple of ses sessions of experience both playing D&D &D and jamming. 
I play Galliot Delerick, a half-orc bard. He has recently come out of a job due to the bankruptcy of his former captain, Pierre. This is the first time he's been on land in months and is in a scurry for another income, be it on the water or not. Hello, my name is Matt, and I will be playing a goblin fighter named Shrimp Stomp. Shrimp Stomp is a member of the Tholuck tribe. This tribe of red goblins outranked all the other goblins based on stench. The fouler the smell of a clan, the better they were. That is until the uprising of the odorless Dreadog clan. The Dreadog clan is an albino clan that has fervently worshipped the goblin deity Mortika. An undead bear with the ability to produce sapien-like creatures called Deep Spawn. With these creatures in tow, the albino goblins attacked the dumb and less stinky Raruska clan first, before overthrowing Shrimp Stomp's clan. This new leadership led to a great war during Shrimp Stomp's grandfather's time against the people that lived on the surface. Shrimp Stomp has recently left his clan, and according to him, has met the goddess Umira. Umira, the Radiant Mother, is a very tall pink and red humanoid goddess robed in gold. She is the goddess of love, fertility, and joy, and is known to appear at births, festivals, and weddings. She is unable to harm and cannot stand violence. If Shrimp Stomp's story is true, he will have to learn to balance between his goblin upbringing and the tenets Umira follows. Combine all that with a typical goblin behavior, and we have our chaotic good character. Hey everyone, I'm Cody. I've played D&D for about a year, so I don't really have that much uh, experience. But I play Thoradin Stronghollow, a dwarven forge cleric of Satoan, a minotaur-like god whom is responsible for laying the foundations for many of Achaea cities. Thoradin belongs to the Dwarven clan Alderfist, a clan that backed a failed coup against the Dwarven High King, led by a dwarf by the name of Bowendal Ironhand. Bowendal fled when it became apparent that his coup failed, leaving his supporters to face the king's justice. All clans that supported Bowendal, including clan Alderfist, were purged. Thoradin is now in exile, searching for justice, but hunted by the Dwarven crown. And those are our players. I've known some of these people for a while now, and uh, they are good guys. I think they're going to do great. But can I do great? We'll find out. The world we're going to visit in this podcast is called Achaea. Achaea is a world built by giants, terrorized by dragons, and populated with many races. In Achaea, gods and goddesses walk the earth. As mysterious as they are, they appear in most cases to be offering Achaea's people a helping hand. In this story, our heroes will find themselves in southernmost Irinar, in the great port city of Ramos. Ramos is a bustling metropolis, populated by peoples from all over the world. It's a busy port, receiving ships from as far east as the great Khanate, and as far south as the desert lands of Salemnos, and as far north as the cold land of Rudea. It's an ancient city, built by invaders from the Bronze Age, who left monuments to immortalize their victory over the native Kestrel, a race of flightless avians who now form the lowest class of people in Ramos, a sad remnant of who they once were. The sea god Naocles is the patron deity of Ramos, and he watches over the sailors who sail the nearby waters. As Ramos has no king, the sea god is seen as the symbolic king of the city. The real power, however, is a corrupt oligarchy of powerful merchants, trading companies, and criminal guilds. Commerce and politics are the blood and bones of Ramos, and conspiracies and espionage cover the city like a web. To survive here, our heroes will need to determine friend from foe and be careful where they step and avoid crossing the wrong people.